yo in spirit of striking while the iron is hot uh i made this post on twitter didn't expect for it to go that crazy uh shout out everyone that reposted it shout out abel um this is huge but what i wanted to do is i just didn't want to just post this and then just like you know people go wow i want to try it out i want to show you the sauce i want to show you the sauce i want to show you how you can actually do this because i just have i just have but i have an m2 mac which is not like the cheapest piece of tech but you know i think a lot of us probably buying macbook pros nowadays many of you probably have a stronger one um but i want to show you it's possible so i'm going to show you the sauce to kind of recreate what i'm doing i'm not going to Mm, I am using I think a paid model I'll just check it out but um, you'll be able to recreate this with anything pretty much so let's dive right on into blender octane I'm not gonna I might make another video if you guys need help with the installation it's not that hard you probably can search this up on YouTube and find an install uh, tutorial and you'll be on your way all right y'all so let's let me show you what what we'll be uh, focusing on today so you'll see right now I'm in Octane, the render engine, in Blender. I think it's Blender 4.0, uh, nothing too crazy here. I know there is a more modern version, but the goal of this video, is it's not a full on tutorial, but it's more or less like you watch this, you'll probably figure out how to kind of set up something very similar. I'm gonna show you how to do these like little imperfections. I'm gonna show you this little glare stuff in Octane. Um, so you know pull up a chair you're probably already sitting in a chair grab some popcorn <laughs> grab some coffee or maybe uh open up blender side by side with me and just like get a simple model of something i don't want you to think too much around modeling um get a simple model get an hdri i'm using like a sky hdri i'll link it below um and you'll be straight so first things first let's let's cover setting up you know octane in terms of just like okay what am i looking at here you know what i mean so when you open it up and you switch into the render engine octane the kernel node tree might be hidden this so you're going to be looking in your render settings it's the third selection down and then it is the kernel node tree my presets are broken it's missing paths so i just kind of just create a new one every time if it's not there but I went ahead and set up my own like <clears throat> default file and I'll link another YouTube video. It's all in Russian, but I watched this dude kind of like explain everything and it was translated the whole time. So the way I like to set it up is I got, I got my max samples at like 500. Um, I know some people do like thousands and stuff. I think when you start to like use the denoiser and the adaptive sampling, you don't need as much or as high of a sample count. Don't quote me on that. I know there's a lot of experts out there. I'm not a huge expert, but some of those experts aren't talking. They're not sharing the sauce. So I'm out here doing this. So don't, don't crucify me. So I set my max samples to 500. My max preview samples to around 256. Um, specular depth, 24. Glossy depth, 24. Diffuse depth, 8. Those are the things. These are the only things I change when getting started. Then let's scroll down. Adaptive sampling, big. This is what you need to make sure you have on because otherwise, from what I have dealt with when setting up Octane, things take a really long time to render. Um, crank on adaptive sampling. I like to set my noise threshold up to 0 0.3. This is exactly like, um, I forget what it's called in cycles, but literally we have a noise threshold in cycles. So like pretty much the higher you set this, the um, the more noise kind of comes into the scene. I forget like the full on like definition, but literally like the lower the number. So if I went 0 0.003, there's gonna be less noise, but it's gonna take a really long time to render. The minimum adaptive samples. I think the way this works is, so when you start the render, right? It's like this race. Your computer is like gathering pixels. And at a certain number, the adaptive sampling starts. So let's say, for example, I'm doing this glass render. I probably could set this to like 500 or 200. Um, but this is directly in correlation with like 
these samples. So my max samples, if I said it's like 600, then I want my, my adaptive sampling to start around maybe like 300. So like half of it is kind of done and then it starts to like be adapt the adaptive sampling starts and it'll kind of just like smoothen out a lot of that noise and stuff and then you have your denoiser and all that that, all that jazz but this is th these are the two things that i really recognize that need to be turned on so adaptive sampling i kind of set these values you can follow me in those values um and then here's around like the sample count that i use and then some of the defaults i set the other thing in this view you want to make sure you adjust is the the view transform i think <laughs> wow that's crazy it actually tells you so you always want to use raw in octane just because uh, i'm going to show you if i swap this to filmic everything kind of gets washed out I've actually made the mistake originally <laughs> when doing Octane. I just started some renders just straight up doing that. But if you use raw, it looks nice and crisp. I think you can. Nah, you really don't. Okay, you really don't want to mess with these like look kind of things. All the editing you're going to want to do off Blender or in the comp composition. So that's that. It's the first chapter. Here. The second chapter. Um, Let's look at how I have this whole thing set up. And it's like, this is not really reinventing the wheel in terms of just like, if you're already using Blender and Cycles and all those things, um, it's gonna be the same jazz. So pretty much I have my can, then I have two cameras here. One is at a different angle. And then these cameras are the focal length. This is the usual. I just kind of set it to like 72. Um, I have some depth of field going on here. So I think we're looking at the second camera right now. So the depth of field is a little different in Octane. Um, I use the same method that I use in like cycles. And the other thing is I see where it says focus distance. I turn off autofocus and I press E. And then from here, I'll like click on a, click on somewhere I want that focal point to be. And let's say uh, you want to like really blur out these edges now. You would use the aperture. And the higher the number, so if I go 0.5, the higher the number, the more like blurred it is. Let's drink some water. Let's drink some water. Let's hydrate. Okay, let's put it back because I don't want that. I'm using around 0 0.15 just because, you know, this is a little bit of like a close up. Um, and that's the like, kind of like the focus section of this. And this is all I really do with the camera. I haven't really explored too much of the other side. So let's pop out real quick. Let's look at my other view here. I'm just gonna go ahead and do this. We'll get to the glares soon, but now let's focus on the material setup that I have. This is how I got those really cool imperfections and all that fun stuff. I'm just going to put this right here. So it looks good. Let's click on here. Oh man, what the fuck? Looks like it's... Okay. So I'm going to delete some of this visual noise. I don't want to confuse you, confuse you guys. So if you're trying to make glass stuff, the specular material is your goat. This is where you're going to start. Um, just like cycles, shift A, you get everything. It is a little different in Octane, but one thing that I would suggest if you just kind of want to like pop in and test out all the different materials, there are some YouTube videos, but go down to Octane material. The ones you want to mess with and test is diffused, glossy, metallic, specular. Um, I don't know much about the tune one, but and the universal one is kind of like one thing I recognize about the universal one is in a lot of the C4D tutorials that I've looked at. 
um i think the universal one is kind of like what's emulated in c4d so that's one that's helped me out like kind of recreate some of the tutorial stuff cool so once i got my specular material i have my glass here you know from here you can mess with things like ior um roughness and turning on like fake shadows kind of changes it a little bit the fake shadows I don't know what the, what it really really does but helps me out now this is akin to your color ramp so if I were to label this for y'all I would call this color ramp this is what we're used to in terms of let's say so right here I have my imperfection that I got from I don't know if we're still calling it Quixel, but fab.com. I got my imperfection of some scratched uh, stuff. And here, let's see if I remember the shortcut key. I'll use my preview. So you'll see with Node Wrangler, if you hold Control Shift and left click, it'll preview that node. So you see my imperfections here. This color ramp helps me kind of refine that. So I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna take a visual image here in my brain. When I scroll here and here, you'll see, oh, sorry, I have to preview it from here. You'll see that it's kind of noticeable, but what I like to do is drag these a little bit in, a little bit in, and now those imperfections are really kind of popping out. Now let's go back here, and you'll see we have our imperfections. It takes a little bit of time. With Octane, I hear my computer working, but you can kind of see like here and there, you'll see a little bit of those imperfections. So you can play around with like frost imperfections. I use like a scratch kind of roughness one. And then um, from your UV transform, you're gonna go ahead and <clears throat> crank that open and use the transform value. I brought down my scale quite heavily just so the scratches are a little bit smaller and not like these massive scratches on this cam. And to be honest, that's like the majority of the materials. Okay, so now that we've done the materials, let's go ahead and crank open our beautiful Octane post processor. Let's see, I don't think I changed, oh, also, well, actually, let's just start it with the octane, like, I don't know what you would call it, but pretty much if you press N, the octane's going to have a tab here. Octane Imager, the one thing that I turned on is Aces Tone Mapping. If we turn it off, boom, that's looking kind of crazy. We don't want all that brightness. I think this helps just, like, kind of make the picture a bit easier. I think it's following the ACES color uh, rule set or whatever that's called. But from there, that really helped me in like Photoshop to just like clean this image up. The denoiser is the other thing that I turned on. Um, it just helps denoise. I think some people say like you might want to turn this on at the end because it uh, makes rendering a little bit longer, but I just leave it on. Now here's the post process. So here's where you get that here. I'm just going to turn it off so you can see the difference. There's no sparkly. It's not looking as pretty. Turn it on. We got that cool glare. So pretty much the cutoff is higher the value, um, the brighter the image has to be for it to be activated. So right now it's at zero. So if I put in 50, I'm sure it looks kind of nice actually. So it looks like where the sun kind of glares. We still have that. If I do 500, it's, is it gonna turn off? No, it's not. Interesting. Must be really bright. I'm gonna turn mine back to zero. Just cause I kind of like it to be a little, actually I'm gonna change it. I'm gonna put it at like 10. But what, what you wanna do is pull on that cutoff, bloom power and glare power. The glare, when you turn it up, Look at those glares. It's kind of crazy. It's a little much. I don't know if we want all that. <laughs> I'm like editing the original 
um, you have your glare ray count this is pretty much for uh, all of you um, used to the compositor bloom in blender it's pretty much kind of like octane special compositor so I have my glare ray set at like three and you can change the angle which kind of just rotates it uh, you can even add in some blur I didn't really change that I didn't change anything here actually to be honest with you and that was pretty much all I messed with I didn't really mess with anything else because it gets really heavy on my end so I'm just gonna go ahead and hide those but that's the this like cute little octane glare and the little sparkles that you're seeing here okay now we're, we're getting kind of far here so hang on this is the last section the compositor it's probably also the simplest one so what I like to do is I bring in a denoise again towards the end and I'll run my image into the denoiser so in here it's it's denoising and then I'll run my image into this mix so think about like it's like a uh, blender <laughs> it's like a blender in the mix I set it to bring the denoised version, which is probably like super, you know, it's like uh, looking almost like an AI image or something. It's very like clean and a little too clean sometimes. And then I'll bring my undenoised one and then I'll bring them together and they'll like kind of, they'll just blend. And it, for me personally, I like the results. I've seen some people do it before and I was like, oh, let me try it out. And I've, I tried it out and since then I've been a fan. And the viewer just lets you like kind of preview it in another window when you click render. I'm not going to do that right now. But that's pretty much the secret sauce, y'all. So I went over, you know, the shading, how I got the imperfections in Octane in my node tree. I went over just setting up, you know, Octane within your, uh, your workspace. Um, I don't think I left anything out, gang. Okay? Oh, and the last thing is the world. Sorry. Oh my God. We'll just chop these together. Now for the world. Same thing like your usual blender, but in Octane, it's, it's going to look a little different. It's your world output. I have a texture environment and then I connect that texture environment to my HDRI. And that's, that's pretty much it. All right. So with this, you know, it's kind of a tutorial, not fully a tutorial, but it's probably enough for you to just like know what is a little bit going on in Octane. Get your feet wet. Um, don't be afraid of it. Be patient. If your machine is kind of like moving slow, just be a little patient with it. You know, maybe uh, turn off the glass for a little bit, you know, just kind of focus on piece by piece and you know build your composition but other than that um, this is a quick video I just wanted to get the word out there and um, show some love so thank you if you're here if you've always been here thank you I, I see all the comments from people are just hyping me up and I really appreciate it because this YouTube thing was just such a random exploration for me and I, I love making the videos I've been making random videos growing up and I hope you have a good day. I'll see you around. Bye.